Hi and welcome back to my workshop. This is my second video about the X-Tool S1 laser. If you haven't seen the first video, then I'll put a link to that below. Recommend that you watch that one first, then come back to this one. So in this video, I'm going to focus on using the software from a first time user's perspective. So whether you're new to lasers in general or just new to the X-Tool Creative Space software, then this could well be a good watch so highly recommend sticking around so i'm going to show you exactly what you need all the steps required to enable you to burn a simple image for yourself any image that you want simple bit of text and then finally we're going to move on to engraving a photograph onto a piece of slate and i'm going to walk you through the various different steps that will result in these different outputs so that you can decide for yourself which one suits you. If that sounds interesting, stick around and stay tuned. There's a lot to get through, so let's get to it. Before you power on the laser, just make sure that your work area is clear and that there's nothing in there that the gantry and or the laser head is going to hit because as soon as you put power to it, it's going to move the gantry and the laser head to the home position and then it's going to move it to the start position and that's an automated sequence so you don't want anything to get in the way okay so the laser is turned on and you can see from the software that it's been correctly identified so we're going to start with a little bit of engraving i'm going to take a piece of poplar four mil ply the thickness is irrelevant for the engraving i'm going to pop it in and then use the little hold downs just to make sure it doesn't move my next step is going to be to set the focal height of the laser and to do that, I'm going to move the head to approximately the middle of the workpiece. It really doesn't matter. Then I'm going to go to my software. And on the right hand side of the screen, I'm going to click on the auto measure button. Again, just a quick look at the laser to make sure the work area is clear and nothing is going to foul any movement. Click the auto measure button. And the laser will extend the... Uh, height measuring pin touch the surface and then whiz to the back right hand corner and retract the pin and that's it that's the focal length of the laser set so it knows exactly where the top of the workpiece is so the next thing I'm going to do is tell the laser about the size of the workpiece that I've got and to do that again on the right hand side of the screen I'm going to click on the start marking button to mark the available processing area. For this example, I'm going to choose a rectangle and then click on start marking. Now I'm going to move the laser head to the top of the available work area and press the button on the front right. And then I'm going to move the head to the bottom right of the work area. And again, press the button. You can be as, as accurate or not as you want to. Entirely up to you. Once I'm happy with that, I'm going to click end marking and then done. And now we've got a rectangle on the screen that we really don't interact with. You can kind of ignore it, but it's there so that you can see exactly where you're going to be engraving your image text whatever to so now i want to get a little something to engrave so i'm going to go up to image at the top left hand side of the screen click the image button as it's 28th of december at the time of recording this i'm going to choose this lovely little reindeer so i'm going to click on the reindeer and then click open and the software is going to import it for me. So the software's now got the image in it and it's just dropped it in the top left hand corner for me. I don't want it there, but if you look around the image, you'll see the handles that you can resize the image and move the image with. And if you look at the mouse cursor, when I move it over the top of the image, it changes to that 
four pronged arrow so if i put the mouse cursor over the image click and hold down my left mouse button i can drag the image into my vault now the image is currently too large so i want to resize it and again if you notice the change in the mouse cursor from a pointer to a two pronged arrow click and hold the mouse button then i can resize it and it will automatically keep the relationship between the x and the y the height and the length if you like sorry the width and the length that'll do just enough for us to be able to see and make sure it's inside my work area piece which it is so with my image still selected if we now look at the right hand side of the screen we can see there's a little pop-up that's appeared here that will allow us to apply filters on top of the image and as you click them if you look back at the image in your work area you can see that it's changing the way it looks I'm going to leave it on original I'm not going to play with any of those settings what I do want to do now is look across a little bit further to the far right hand side of the screen and there's a box here entitled object setting so I want to make sure that it's set to output if we set it to ignore that's fairly obvious and I want it set to engrave now I want the laser to use one of the preset um, power and speed settings which is available underneath this screen and to get to that all I need to do is deselect my image so if I click on the background those two little pop-up windows disappear and I get back to this window where I can choose from this drop down the type of material that I've placed into the laser my workpiece and three mil basswood is pretty darn close I've actually got a poplar ply but the setting for three mil basswood works just as well so with that set if i now reselect my reindeer image i can now see that settings change to reference power is set to 25 and speed is set to 200 so i'm going to leave it as that for this example but i do want to point out that the bitmap mode it's going to use to interpret that image is set to grayscale now there are quite a few options we can choose here and we'll use two more of these in a sec but for now we're just going to leave that set to grayscale and at the default of 100 lines per centimeter so there are basic settings set what i now want to do is get the laser to show me where it thinks it's going to burn that image so to do that i'm going to use the framing tool so if i click on framing the laser beeps and the software says press the button to make the laser show me where it's going to cut so again just a quick glance to make sure there's nothing going to foul the head press the button at the front laser is going to move to the appropriate height and then it's going to frame out the area where it's going to burn the image to so that looks absolutely perfect to me back at the software if i click framing complete I'm now ready to run my job and engrave the reindeer. So I'll close the lid of the laser, hit the process button in the bottom right hand corner. The laser is going to show me what it's going to do. I've got the option to frame again in the top right hand corner of the software. I don't need to do that. So I'm going to click the start button. The software will upload the file, the instructions to the laser. And now I merely need to press the button on the front and it'll start the job. So six minutes, a little over six minutes. And we've got our first engraving, a beautiful reindeer. So for my second example, I'm going to engrave some text onto a piece of plywood, a simulated sign, if you like. I've already set my laser focus, my height, distance, 
and I've already marked out my processing area. So I'm going to go and click on the text icon on the top left hand side of the screen and I get presented with a hello in a text box in the middle of the work area. So I'm going to drag that down to my processing area and just size it roughly. Now over on the right hand side on the screen you can see the text box. So in here I'm going to write something a little more worthwhile for me anyway. I'll resize that down again. I'm going to set my typeface to, I quite like this dancing script font. Makes it look a little handwritten. And I'm going to choose medium from the style. Could go with bold. Yeah, why not? Let's go bold. Spacing, I'm going to leave leading. I'll leave an alignment I'm quite happy with. Over on my object setting window, I've got output set and processing types. So I can either have score, engrave or cut. If I go for score, then the laser is essentially going to burn the outside, the outline of the text. I don't want the outline. I want the, the solid filled letters. So if I click on engrave, that's exactly what it's going to give me. If I click off of the image, my material set to 3 mil basswood. The height's irrelevant, I'm not cutting. Basswood's a very light plywood, so I've got a somewhat darker plywood. So I'm going to up the power from 30% to 40% and see how I go. As I'm just doing an engraving, if it's not dark enough, I can run it again. So I'm going to go with a 40%. I'm going to get the laser to frame, show me where it's going to burn. Okay, happy with that. And once again, we'll process. Close the lid. And hit the start button. That's come out really well. Happy with that. So for this third and final example in this video, I'm going to engrave this photograph. It's a cutout from a photograph of this horse and rider onto a piece of slate. And I'm going to show you a progression, the, the difference between the various settings that you could use. So I want to get four copies of this across this piece of slate. So I'm going to resize it just using the same techniques that I showed you in the first example. So in order to get different settings across all four images, I'm going to use layers. So I'm going to click on the image of the second horse and then here in the left hand corner on the layer window, I'm going to choose move to, I'll choose red for the second layer. I'll do the same for the third horse move that to the yellow layer and the fourth horse I'll move to the green layer. So before I go and set the settings for the various layers I'm going to go to my material list and I'm going to choose stone coaster. With my material selected I'm going to click on layer one. I'm not going to change anything for the bitmap settings. I'm just going to make sure I've got output engrave grayscale and I'm going to leave the power and the speed exactly as they are. Now I'm going to click on layer 2 for the second image and in layer 2 I want to reduce the power down to 15%. All of the other settings I'm going to leave the same. On the third image I'm going to reduce the power down to 15% and I'm going to change from grayscale to Jarvis 
and on the fourth image fourth layer I'm going to invert the image and I'm also going to drop the power to 15 and I'm going to change the bitmap mode to Jarvis everything else will stay at the default setting I'll hit process close my lid and hit the start button all four images engraved in 28 minutes i think that's fantastic and here's the result and as you can see the differences are quite dramatic the two images on the left were both burnt in grayscale the two images on the right both burnt in jarvis on the far left 30 percent power and then these three on the right are all now at 15 percent power you can see 30 percent power is overburnt is far too much it's just um like an overexposed negative really the 15 percent power is a lot better you can start to see more detail less overexposed if you like but still not good enough then move switch into jarvis as opposed to grayscale on this third image is much improved but the fourth image the fourth image i think is just superb that is almost photorealistic. You can really see the detail around the horse's legs, the horse's face, and even into the rider's face. And the difference between the shoe and the leg coverings, I don't know what that's called, leather chaps, are they called? Or is that what the cowboys wore? Anyway, superb, fantastic result. So if you've made it this far, congratulations and thanks very much. As you can see, it's quite a feature-rich bit of software. As long as you know where to go to get to which part, then it's fairly intuitive and quite pleasant to use and very, very capable. So that's it for engraving and indeed for this video. In the next video, we're going to make some very useful little boxes. Hope to see you then. Thanks for watching. Ta-ra.